in British Columbia for marijuana activism, I've been arrested ten times, and I've been jailed eight times, and I've been raided five times. You know, and of the four raids were of substantial financial impact. They probably got somewhere between three quarters and a million dollars worth of my assets. So, yeah, they'll hurt you. But bear in mind, I've still only spent in British Columbia a total of maybe 10 days in jail. And I've been convicted of 22 different offenses. I, and I'm never even, I've never even been it's, put on it's probation. It's too bad you're not an attorney to, to Well, I've never even been put on probation these. because the judges don't find fault with marijuana activists. Mm -hmm. or marijuana growers. They're, they're, the judiciary is not bound by any mandatory minimums and therefore the judiciary is by and large sympathetic to the marijuana legalization movement at least in regards sentencing. So the sentencing mm -hmm. for the most part is not a jail term. It's a financial penalty and that's what I've always received, financial penalties. And I, yeah. by the way, never I've been found guilty of every charge ever put toward me. So <clears throat> so it's not like I have a lawyer that gets me off. I've been found oh. guilty of all these things. Oh my goodness! Uh, but uh, let me get back to the seed, the seed bank for a moment. Uh, now, um, is there a is there a, a website where people can uh, contact your? Well, seed we certainly company? have a big organization on the net, and otherwise, it's emeryseeds.com. E M E R Y S E E D S uh, dot com. Emeryseeds dot com. Uh, Cannabisculture dot com is. Uh, the electronic equivalent to our magazine, Cannabis Culture Magazine, which is available throughout Kentucky and mm -hmm. uh, throughout the United States, and has our seed catalog in it. And then there's pottv.net, pot-tv.net, and that's a wonderful place for people with uh, computers to watch shows. We I still call them TV shows. To me, the Internet's TV. It's just on the computer. Mm -hmm. But for people to watch shows that we produce, um, in streamed video, and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows you can watch on Pot TV. It's probably the biggest mm -hmm. undiscovered treasure for a lot of people. You know, mm -hmm. you can see all the heroes of the movement illuminated, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't make any money. That costs us about ten grand a month, and there's no revenue to it. So, mm. uh, <coughs> ooh, that's tough. Well, that's what well, seeds. That's the job. Well, of the let's seeds let's go back to the seeds now. Now, can anybody back in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, order your seeds? Uh, yeah. And yeah. and uh, how do they? I mean, well, they just get the catalog, or they go online and they order it as simple as you imagine. Just send a money order in and uh, keep your receipt on hand, and uh, you get the seeds probably within four to five weeks later. Like the UPS? Uh, just in the mail. Just in Yeah, anything. We don't send it any way you have to sign for it. It just shows up. And that way, if security is a concern or something happens or it got intercepted, you can basically say, I never heard of this guy. I don't know. Because there's no evidence that anyone ever ordered the seeds inside our letters. In other words, stuff may arrive, but it doesn't look like you asked for it. Well, wouldn't it be on the MasterCard or the Charge Card? Oh, no, we don't take credit cards for your own protection. Oh, really? Yeah, we don't want any paper trail around showing you did anything at all. Uh -huh. And so uh, all correspondence is destroyed the day it arrives, for example, um, and then, you know, you can have it sent to a post office box and, you know, any number of ways that make it discreet for you and uh, don't invite problems. So so people uh, ordering from your company around the world, across the board, have, have uh, not had problems with oh, the law? Oh, no, we've had, uh, in, in not to mention the United States, but we, we've had seeds go to Germany, Croatia, some of the emerging nations in the world. We've had seeds go to Mexico to help improve the uh, Mexican outdoor strain there. So there'll be some serious improvements to some degree out of and Mexican pot. Of course, the problem with Mexican wheat is not that it's bad wheat; is that it's packed and stored terribly, and not grown with you know in strict sense of MIA organic standards. And and this is what happens: is that the weed starts out fine. It's just the processing to get it to America. It's often buried underground. It sits in hot, you know, temperatures for a great deal of time, deteriorating and what have you. And seeds, stems, the usual nonsense me a problem. So that's why Mexican wheat and, is so poor. And uh, <coughs> the, the uh, Mark Emery seeds now, there's there's uh, probably people back home might be surprised. There's not just like one or two strains of seeds. We're talking about... Uh, 530, I think. 530. Now, we may have cleaned up a few of them. In other words, some, some strains, you know, we only had a finite number of them. So there's usually always going to be between about 420 and 540 different varieties. Uh, of strains, you know, a lot. Of, most of them are permanent. These people are, do this for a living. They grow these strains out like, and we have about ten companies that are Canadian. A few American companies like DJ Short, and who produce blueberry. That's the world famous blueberry. And then the rest of them are from Holland, Amsterdam, and produced in Switzerland. 
and a tremendous amount of seeds come from those areas. Wow! And 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 do you and this whole, is the company here in this in right here in Vancouver? Well, actually, it's uh, distributed more broadly throughout British Columbia. Uh -huh. <coughs> My office is here in Vancouver, but but to keep the security of the seeds intact, what we do is we have it com uh, broken down into four cells. So after I handle merely the receiving of the envelope and, and make some notes, it goes to another person who does one stage of it and then another person. So that ultimately involves four people who don't know each other. Wow. And, uh, but, or, but from a business point of view, or, uh, I mean, you pay taxes to Canadian government? Oh, yeah. No, no. We, we accept. The, the difficulty is I pay personal income tax. And last year, in fact, I, for the year 2001, I, I'm, I'm assessed at $140,000. And that's not a dispute. That's what I claim I owe them, and they agree. So I, I, That's your tax. That's my personal. That's just for me. <laughs> wow. That's just for my tax, yeah. Because even I have to declare a fairly substantial personal income because... Although I regard a lot of our, like we gave around, we gave about half a million dollars away in the last half year, and probably close to a million in the last two and a half years, just to American prisoners of the drug war, lawyers for Americans. And largely I mean, for this is money that, uh, that you have earned through the seed company yeah, to some extent? Yeah, through the seed For example, we, you know, there was a clash action suit a couple of years ago in Philadelphia, um, for the medical marijuana people suing their federal government. It didn't work, but, you know, we spent $35,000 on that. I would have given, uh, I've given lawyers like in Seattle to defend the Green Cross and people associated with the Green Cross 4000 bucks recently. I gave Ben Mizell a $1,000 grant. I gave Cures Not War, Dana Beals group that do the Million Marijuana March, I gave them about $15,000 in the last four months. Oh, wow. Uh, we're their primary sponsor. We gave the, uh, the, uh, the March in London, England for Million Marijuana March and their festival, we give, they gave them a grant of about 4,000 pounds, so $10,000 there. And uh, we give money to the groups in Australia New Zealand. During the New Zealand federal election two and a half years ago, we bought full-page ads in two newspapers to promote the legalized marijuana party that's in New Zealand. And... Uh, yeah, I heard they had a report at the National Normal. And we're meeting paying for the we're we're the largest contributors to the Supreme Court case. There's a Supreme Court hearing at the end of this year in Canada that will clearly debate whether marijuana should be legal or not. That that. I was thinking about you today I was thinking about you today I was thinking about you today I was I was thinking about you today. 